coming up on Mountain News at 6. This week, the city of Hazard plays host to more than 300 professionals from across the region to learn about innovation and entrepreneurship. And Knox County Schools announces a no backpack policy. How will this be enforced and what impact do officials hope it will have? Hot weather continues as we head into the remainder of the work week and the beginning of the weekend. The very latest on how hot we get coming up next at 6. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Good evening, I'm Dakota Makris. Thank you for joining us tonight. We now begin with a developing story out of Logan County, West Virginia. Investigators are on the scene of a deadly helicopter crash that took the lives of six people last night. Well, the crash happened on Route 17 and the road has been closed ever since. Well, the helicopter officials tell us often gave tourism rides as officials try to figure out what led to this tragic event. One witness shares her terrifying experience running to the helicopter prior to calling 911. I saw that there was a guy trapped in, I guess, the captain or whatever. But I tried, I tried to get down to the, to the door where he was at. I mean, you could see him plain as day, but the fire is just so hot, like I couldn't, I couldn't get to him. Senator Joe Manchin shared sympathy, saying it is a heartbreaking time for the families, friends, and loved ones of those in the crash, and adding he knows the entire state feels this loss, saying his staff is ready to offer support to those in Logan County. Shaping our Appalachian region, or SOAR, continues day one. WIMT Zach Hawk is live, what well, was live from the convention earlier, letting us know how the opening night went, and now he's live in downtown Hazard for a reception. Zach. Dakota, this, this summit, this focused summit, focuses on entrepreneurs and innovation. Breaking from the tradition of having an annual summit that tries to tackle the many problems across the mountains. Highlighting day one of SORA startup pitch competition will award one entrepreneur $10,000 to launch their innovative idea into a business. SOAR Executive Director Colby Hall says that person will join the dozens of new businesses SOAR's host City Hazard saw open in the last year. So it made a lot of sense for us as we're rotating around the region to come to Hazard, have an event focused on innovation, entrepreneurship, and uh, we're, we're, we're doing it. It's kind of crazy that it's already here, but uh, we're off to a great start. Hazard Perry County Economic Development Alliance Director Zach Lawrence says he is thrilled for people from across the region to see how Hazard is growing. It's been wonderful to work with the SOAR team and uh, to welcome SOAR and, and all of our partners, our uh, colleagues from across the region to Hazard and uh, just show off what we've done. Perry County Judge Executive Scott Alexander says he is glad to see the region take notice of the success in his county and hopes that that knowledge helps across the mountains. It's huge. Anytime you can get outsiders to come into your town and see what all is going on, you get the chance to showcase the, the talent, the business, and the locals here. Day one of SOAR featured presenters, but day two starts early Friday and attendees will break out in groups and try to learn how to take successful ideas from one community back to their own. Now in just a few minutes, attendees from the summit will be here in downtown Hazard at the art station just behind me for a reception and a networking event. I'm also told they'll be taking a walk around downtown, having a little tour of how much this main street has grown in just the last year. Live in Hazard, Zach Hawk, WYMT Mountain News. All right, Zach, thank you. We appreciate you. We'll have a wrap up from day one of SOAR tonight on Mountain News at 11. Well, as you can no doubt see from Zach's live shot, not only is the sun out, but that sun is slowly setting as we run through our evening hours as those days get ever and ever shorter. Not too much shorter compared to yesterday, but shorter they get nonetheless. I-75 in London, all blue sky right now as the traffic continues to move smoothly on the interstate. We are still seeing a little bit of cloud cover in the distance from our camera in downtown Whitesburg. 86 they sit right now. 57 the dew point in Whitesburg as well. 
And those winds out of the north and northeast helping with dry air. Temperatures around the region, well, they're slowly dropping. Hazard got up to 90 not too long ago. They sit now, we sit now here in Hazard at 84. Many of us still in the upper 80s, though. A couple of 90s, Jonesville, Jacksboro in the 90s, right at 90 as a matter of fact. But we'll start to see things cool off because we don't have a ton of humidity. Those temperatures will continue to drop into the 50s and 60s. And that means it'll be drier and feels cooler as we run through tonight. Pinpoint Doppler, a clean sweep around the region. We'll continue to see all quiet weather as we run through tonight. So mid 60s, mostly clear for us tonight. Now coming up in just a little bit, I'll have the very latest on when we could see some showers and storms perhaps return to the forecast coming up in just a little bit. Dakota. All right, Evan, thank you. A Kentucky State Police Trooper is accused of using excessive force and then trying to cover it up. A federal grand jury in London indicted 32-year-old Michael Howell for conspiracy to obstruct a criminal investigation. Well, the Justice Department reports that Howell and another trooper conspired with others to make up a story to explain the use of force. Howell is expected to be in court next month and could face decades in prison. Well, we have learned the name of a Kentucky power worker who died in a car crash this morning while working in Perry County. A spokesperson said the crash happened in the Viper community. Well, the family said the worker was 58-year-old Wallace Wu Melton Jr. Kentucky power officials say they are heartbroken and extend their condolences to the family and to all who knew their employee. Now, we are working to find out funeral arrangements and will keep you updated. Knox County Board of Education approved a no backpack policy for middle and high school students this upcoming school year. Our Jade Saylor has the details, safety precautions and more. Knox County School Board is enforcing their no backpack policy district wide, including Knox Central after testing it out in the middle schools. Anything to be brought in on a backpack. Uh, Knox County Middle School, when they implemented this policy, was at the same time that we started using the metal detector. They believe it will be enforced year round because they have seen it work in the past with no fall through. Because it worked at Knox Middle, because it's working now at Lane Camp Middle High since they just started this past school year. Um, that's why we made it a district policy. The policy is a safety precaution from harmful weapons that could fit in a larger bag to smaller problems students might face. Chains and stri strips and things hanging off of them and that can easily uh, trip somebody. The school district does take into account sports teams and clubs that may need to bring a travel bag to school. Those students that must bring a bag to school, it may be luggage, you know, if they're taking a trip. All that will be stored inside the school until the student needs it. Purses and small bags will also be allowed in the school. Small purses, small little bags, you know, for those personal items will still be permitted. Students will store books and items in their locker and only take what they need when they need it. In Knox County, Jade Saylor, WIMT Mountain News. Well, with technology, the school board believes there is less carrying home books and paper for students to complete homework, making it easier to go without a backpack. The Knox County School District is purchasing school supplies for the upcoming school year. Well, the district is using its elementary and secondary school emergency relief funds to fund teachers and classrooms with school supplies for every student. Knox County did this last year and wanted to help parents out by doing it again this year. One of the things that we decided to do with that federal funds is to sort of in a way give it back to families. Um, School supplies is one thing that families all go out and purchase, and it's one of the things that cost a lot, especially up front in August. Well, the school district will supply all school supplies needs throughout the entire school year. Two laws on mental health will soon take effect. One expands something called Tim's Law, which was named after a Lexington man. It allows courts to, out, to order outpatient mental health treatment. Governor Andy Bashir also formally signed a law to help first responders get mental health treatment. He specifically mentioned crews who worked in Mayfield last December. The laws take effect on July 15th. Governor Andy Bashir declared a state of emergency today against price gouging. The executive order activates state price gouging laws to protect families from overly high gas prices. The governor says it is a step that needed to be taken. So today I'm taking this action because I believe strongly that even minimal relief is better than no relief. 
Well, AAA reported on average a high of $4.73 per gallon of gas on June 20th. The Kentucky Office of Drug Control Policy released a report saying drug overdoses increased 15% from 2020 to 2021. Among those overdoses, 73% involved fentanyl, a drug 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Our Chandler Wilcox details why fentanyl is so dangerous and what to do when you encounter it. Fentanyl was made for surgical purposes. That typically has been used, you know, in surgeries or, uh, you know, for people with chronic pain. So, again, most everyone shouldn't just be using this substance, you know, for pain management. And now health officials say it's going beyond the surgery table and into homes. There's a lot of people now that fentanyl is their drug of choice. And that's where the real danger is now is that you just don't know how much is in what you're buying. CDC officials say fentanyl is considered to be 25 to 50 times stronger than heroin, using a smaller amount to create a quicker high than many other opioids, giving dealers more incentives to sell the drug without the buyer's knowledge. That's really occurring because of uh, something called, you know, just a pressing of pills. Uh, uh, dealers are mixing in this substance because it is so potent, it is so addictive. Health officials say it can cause traumatic bodily reactions, slowing down the person's breathing with even the smallest of doses. It slows their breathing down and so less oxygen, you know, is getting to their brain and that can cause them to pass out, you know, and, and or overdose. Anti-overdose treatments like Narcan can temporarily help, but officials encourage people to seek immediate medical attention after taking fentanyl. The, the overdose is reversed at home. They wake up, they don't want to go to the hospital. And the Narcan is temporary, it wears off. And if you've got enough drugs in your system, once that fentanyl or the Narcan wears off, you could overdose again. Officials recommend everyone avoid handling fentanyl and for first responders at the scene to wear gloves when handling the narcotics. In Barry County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Officials also say to not use hand sanitizer when exposed to fentanyl because it will absorb the powder into your skin. They say it is safer to wash your hands with soap to avoid the toxic effects. Home prices and interest rates are climbing and for now, experts say demand for homes is still outpacing supply in nearby Lexington. Nationally, the housing market is cooling. In Lexington, retailer uh, realtors say it's still a strong seller's market and renting right now is not easy. What we've noticed here at Community Action Council is that housing has become less affordable and harder and harder to find, especially for those who are low income and extremely low income. Well, tonight at 11 o'clock, Garrett Weimer digs through the data to see what it all means and where buyers and renters go from here. Well, toasty temps continue through the start of the weekend. I've got the latest on if storms are on the way to cool us down at all coming up. Plus, and we talked to Johnson County leaders on how new funding from the Kentucky Department of Agriculture will help feed local community members. 